It's the Daily Doug. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Daily Doug. Thanks for being with me today. My friends, it's a Friday. It's the end of a week, and I am making today a Masterpiece Friday. And let me tell you a little bit about Masterpiece Fridays. These are a little difficult for me to program because most of the time, I have not heard the piece before. So how do I know without hearing it that it's actually a masterpiece? Most of the time, it's due specifically to the suggestions of the folks that watch the show, to uh, the the charting of these songs, to the fact that I even know what they are, <laughs> right? That I've heard of them. If I've heard of them, then they must have broken through somehow and gotten some uh, uh, great coverage in the music world. So that's normally what happens. Today, I am picking a song that I know quite well, that I happen to know firsthand is a masterpiece uh, because I've heard it many times. It's Sweet Judy Blue Eyes from Crosby, Stills, and Nash. I'm excited to share this with you all. I'm sure most of you have heard this. Um, I have uh, heard it, like I said, many, many times. This is the first track from their first album, the very first sounds that we hear from this classic trio. Really cool, right? And I have their album right here, Crosby, Stills, and Nash. There's the three guys, their very first album. Uh, it was released in 1969 in September after being recorded earlier that year. Stephen Stills wrote the song and he wrote it about his former girlfriend, Judy Collins, who is also quite famous, right? It's uh, a play on words, the title, Sweet, Judy Blue Eyes, S-W-E-E-T, versus S-U-I-T-E, -E, as a musical suite, right? That's really cool. Uh, these two folks, they met in 1967, and they dated for a few years, but Stephen, when they got to be recording this, uh, this album, uh, knew that their relationship wasn't going to last and she had fallen in love with somebody else. So Stephen was quite devastated at the uh, possibility of this looming breakup, and he wrote this song as an response uh, to his sadness. The song itself has gone on to be a mainstay of classic folk rock repertoire. The album won them the Grammy in 1970 for Best New Artist, and the song and the album helped launch them to stardom. And we know who they are even all these years later, half a century later, right? Really, really great. David Crosby is on harmony vocals. Graham Nash is also on harmony vocals. Stephen Stills is doing a lot of the instrumental playing and singing lead. He's got lead, he's got the guitars, he's got the bass, and a little organ work. They are joined by session drummer Dallas Taylor. So let's get it, y'all. This is going to be fun. I happen to know this one. It is Sweet Judy Blue Eyes from Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Here we go. And it starts in just the one ear. It's getting oh, to man. My keyboard's a little out of tune with that. I am sorry Sometimes it hurts So badly I must cry out loud I am lonely You know, it took a lot I of listens for me to realize you are mine. You that this was a song that comes out of sadness for a looming breakup heart. because it's so groovy. And it just what we've said makes you want to groove, right? And done and felt about each other. If they have mercy, don't let the past remind us of what we are not now. Yeah, it's out of tune. I am not dreaming. I am yours. You are mine. You are what you are. <laughs> Darn, I was hoping to play along with this one a little bit. I don't think I'm going to do it anymore. It's just in the cracks. Tearing yourself away from me now. You are free. 
I am crying. Tearing yourself away from me, now you are free, and I am crying. It's a sad tune. This doesn't mean I don't love you. I do. That's forever. Yes and always. But it's just freaking groovy. You are mine. You are what you are. You make it hard. I always find myself singing Graham's part, not the lead. Are you still listening? They're in E, and they're mainly using just the chords from E major. Simple chords. Progressive, I don't think so. Folk. Like a folk rock style here. There's the E. Or the A. No, the B, then the A. New section here, part of the suite, just continues, halftime feel. What have you got to lose? <laughs> what have you got to lose? Come on, hang out with me. You know it's going to be fun. Come on. And you know, they're so good. Please be gone. I'm tired. I'm it's really hard for me to pick out David's part. What have you got to lose? In the middle. Because it just sinks so well with the. With the the voices around him. High E. Holy crap. The interesting thing about this suite, too, y'all, is that it's mostly in the same key. E major. What have I got to lose? Will you come see me? So I think he's getting around to most of the days of the week. We talked about Fridays and Tuesday mornings, Friday evenings, Sunday in the afternoon, Tuesday mornings, Thursdays and Saturdays. He's trying to pick any freaking day that they can be together. At least give me Mondays. Come on, Mondays are hard enough. Something's uh, different here. New portion of the suite. Sounds like a sitar, doesn't it? Not from Canary, Ruby Float, Sparrow, sing the song, don't be long, thrill me to the back. Yeah, I'm not quite in tune with them, but that's okay. There it is. I forgot. The it's been a while since I heard it. Ring around the moonlight, asking me, said so they filled so up free. the vocals How here in this section, starting with Steve and going to David and then going to Graham. The percussion is great too in the background, isn't it? Lacey, wilting lady, losing right. love, lamenting, my change my life, make it right, be my lady. So they're on that E. And they finally get to A. It's a new key. So they're doing 
doing the doo doos in the background, and meanwhile, Steven is singing in Spanish. And I think he's just remembering a trip that they had to Cuba. It's just a groovy tune, y'all. And there it goes. Ends on the E chord, on the five of that last uh, uh, key that they were in. And so the first a uh, couple of, of go-rounds of sections in this were all in E, and then finally he turns that E into a dominant, and it resolves to A, and that's where they end up with the little Spanish section and those uh, doo-doos in the background. It's a great tune, isn't it? You know, I spend so much time here on The Daily Doug uh, seeking out the music that I have not previously heard. And it uh, creates a great relationship with all of y'all because you're sharing with me the music that has thrilled you and I get to come along for the ride and learn uh, what uh, sounds just really enthrall you, right? And it's it's neat because I get to, uh, to film having a first reaction, a first experience with these songs and that creates... A, a relationship between us like y'all are like you know the one thing you can't do is have a second chance at hearing something or experiencing something for the first time and uh it's kind of cool to witness somebody else doing it because it brings you back to that time as well and that's part of the fun of doing these episodes but every once in a while y'all i need to go back and just uh, revel in a classic piece that we all know because it deserves our time, even all these years later. And so today, that's what we're up to with Sweet Judy Blue Eyes. The thing that I did not know and that I wanted to read in on today was to learn how it came to pass that these great musicians did not have other gigs uh, at that time and then found themselves together and we get this great music. Um, the short story is that uh, David Crosby had been with the Birds, who he co-founded uh, in 1964. And uh, he ended up leaving that band in 1967. There was friction with his bandmates, especially, I think, with his political ideas, uh, which he continued to espouse and uh, for his entire life, right? Stephen Stills began his professional career with Buffalo Springfield, uh, who also included Neil Young in that band, but they disbanded in 1968. Uh, Graham Nash, the, the British lad of the group, had co-founded the Hollies in the early 1960s. So he met uh, David and Stephen during a U.S. tour for the Hollies in 1966. In 1968, he returns to the U.S., and Cass Elliott from the Mamas and the Papas more formally introduced him to uh, Graham and uh, introduced Graham to Stephen and, and David, and uh, Graham decided to leave the Hollies and form this new group after they sang together and realized that they had a pretty great and unique sound when all three of them sang together. They would later become a quartet when Neil Young was invited into the band. Remember, Neil uh, knew these guys. He was with uh, Buffalo Springfield with Stephen Stills, and... Um, they became a quartet, so sometimes they would be a trio and sometimes they'd be a quartet. Either way, the music's great. Megan and I actually had a chance now uh, going on almost a quarter century ago in the early 2000s to get a chance to see this quartet with Neil Young uh, singing, and it was a magical, magical evening of live music. I've loved these guys for years and years, and this song specifically accompanies Megan and I, especially when we're in the car and going on long trips. We love singing along to it and trying to make up new harmonies and outdo each other with uh, joining in in the harmonies. That's the great thing about folk music. It invites people to join with and not just be a spectator or a receiver. It invites us to make music with them because it's folk music and it's great. Folk rock. Uh, the original trio was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, the thing that's really fascinating is that all the other, all of these musicians are also inducted into the Hall of Fame for different uh, projects. Stephen is also inducted for his work with Buffalo Springfield. David is inducted for his work with the Birds, and Graham is also inducted for his work with the Hollies. Makes sense. And meanwhile, Neil Young, he has not been inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as a member of Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young, but he has 
uh, for his time with Buffalo Springfield and as a solo artist. And we get these four musicians who have individual talents, but together they make magic, friends. And luckily they recorded it for all of us to be able to hear time and time and time again. So 50 something years later, Sweet Judy Blue Eyes is still one of my favorites to listen to. And I'm thrilled to be able to sneak it in here to the Daily Doug and share my love of it with all of you. I hope that was fun for you. It definitely was for me. I'm sorry that my keyboard was a little bit out of tune with them. Sometimes that happens. Uh, whether the song is rendered uh, a, a little bit, uh, you know, up or down, or whether they were just uh, playing in the cracks that particular day. Sometimes that happens, but that's part of the fun of all of this. We do it live and see uh, what we come up with. This has been great, y'all. Thank you for being with me this week. And uh, on this particular episode, I very much appreciate it. I have more coming up next week, but that is all for today and this week. Thanks, y'all. We'll see you next time on another edition of the Daily Doug. It's the Daily Doug. Welcome to the Daily Doug. The Daily